Uh, Nick Crowley. Don't know who Omi is, but the moments before a murder has got me going. I love criminal shit. Criminal Minds, CSI this, CSI that, Forensic Files. I'm all for it. <laughs> Kind of lit. Damn, that happened every video. That's creepy as fuck. The moments before murder. Oh, oh, this is it. Homie got a mask on. Ew. Camera three. Is this a home camera? Oh shit. There are three perspectives to this. There's these men covered with plastic masks, focused, waiting. Definitely stalking. in Ohio as another sneaks around out front, surrounding the perimeter of a South Ogden home. Ogden? There's those in- Bruh, that is like 20 minutes away from me. Ew, bitch, that's Utah, not Ohio. Oh, hell no. Inside the house, a group of renters just enjoying their night, unaware of the fact that outside they were surrounded. Bruh. And then, there's you, watching. Not only unaware, but helpless to the situation unfolding before you. Bro, chill. Has not only have you witnessed the stalking of a home, you've also witnessed the moments before a murder. You chill. Before we start, this video has an incredibly oh. fitting sponsor, Hunt a Killer. Oh my Hunt god. Is okay, I'm, I'm gonna keep it real with you, homie. No. Fucking creepy, bro. Trying to get me to not watch this video. Code Nick. Use code Nick. HuntTheKiller.com, code Nick. Yeah, homie broke the fourth wall. I hate that shit. In the moments following these clips, gunshots would ring out as the stalkers opened fire on a group of people inside the home. Open fire? The situation would wind up with 24-year-old Kyle Van Coleman Cold and 61-year-old Kevin Nelson being shot to death. No. With another young man being struck, just barely surviving. And what's most disturbing about this situation is that... A motive for this attack has never been found, and neither have the killers. Secu I'm gonna die. It went cold? They didn't even find the killers, dude? Oh, hell no. Thank God I don't- oh. Show one of the men running away from the scene, but his identity has never been found. And the same is true with the others. And with this case nearing four years with little to no leads, it's four? getting colder and colder each day. An unexpected, unmotivated, and unsolved killing. L cameras, bro. That's not capturing shit. I can barely tell they're wearing anyone. a mask. The aftermath of this event was obviously disturbing, but the way they stalk this home before their crime is <laughs> chilling to say the least. That's kind of weird. And it somewhat reminds me That's... of another infamous Hold on, that's a, that that seems like it definitely has a motive. What you think? Just like some hoodlums are like, yeah, this is the house. Let's do this one, just at random. No way. That ha there had to have been a story, right? Like no way, just a randomly masked individuals just go straight up to a house and open fire. There's probably, I'm not I'm not like victim blaming or anything, <laughs> but I feel like there's some weird drug, maybe gang related, maybe I don't know. That seems pretty specific. Video clip. That, in many ways, was even more twisted. Stop, dude. It's freaking me out. Freaking video editing. Creepy as hell. It was June 25th, 2011. A camera points inside the home of Laura Giddings, a 27-year-old law student, who was only a short time away from completing her bars. In the video, we can't see Lauren, but the man behind the camera knew she was home. Bruh. His name is Stephen McDaniels, a Ew. classmate of Lauren's <laughs> and her next door neighbor. Where's all me looking, bro? Look at him, he fucking trained his, he trained his eye to look through the camera and look straight at the same time so he could get both footages. Look at it and get on film at the same time. Fucking weirdo. Made of Lawrence and her next door neighbor. And over the previous months, he had become romantically interested in Lauren. A feeling that was far from mutual with Lauren turning oh. down his offer for a date. Oh! And most people would just leave it at that. But for oh. Steven, the rejection made him fall deeper, to the point She sent him in a villain arc, bro. He would follow her, track her movements, <coughs> and since they were neighbors, he knew where she lived, and he knew when she was home. 
That's scary. Which brings us to this clip which, without context, is creepy enough. It shows Steven pointing the camera in Lauren's home, seemingly trying to catch a glimpse of her. All the while, Lauren was completely unaware of the man outside her home. There's a fucking fly in here, with dude. with context, it's even darker. Because not only did this clip show the moments of Stephen McDaniel stalking Lauren. That is so fucking weird, It bro. also shows us the moments before her murder. Oh, oh yeah, I forgot this was murder. The video, Steven would continue his stalking inside the home. It he broke would enter killer. Lauren's house and creep over to the room that she was sleeping in. But as he approached, he ended up stepping on a creaky floorboard, causing Lauren to wake up. She yelled at him to leave her house, but in an instant, Steven would lunge at her, wrapping his hands around her neck choking her to death. Oh, he freaked out. The following day, he would return to her house to dispose of her body, chopping her up into pieces. Oh my god. her in the trash. Oh my god. Every time I see this clip, I get chills because she never saw this coming. Bro, but some of the darkest moments nuts. of this case actually came after this footage. In the days following her death, authorities were viewing this case as a disappearance given the fact that there was no body, and Stephen wasn't even considered a suspect. What? To the point where a news station casually interviewed him, assuming he was no just- No shot! Anyone heard from her was an email that she sent out, and no one's heard from her since. In the meantime, Stephen believed- They interviewed him?! Be caught, as by this point, the garbage should have been taken away, along with Lauren's body. Steven really thought he was in the clear. Bro, just put it in the there trash. There was one problem. That day, the garbage truck had ran late, and detectives had gotten to the scene just before the truck would oh, take Lauren's body clutch. away. Oh, clutch. And as the detectives pulled up, they would check the garbage can and find Lauren's sawed-off torso. It said that if they had arrived just a few minutes later, the garbage truck would have been taken away and Steven would likely have gotten away with murder. That's insane! The, the timing! Is, at the time Steven was being interviewed by that local news station, he had no idea that Lauren's body had been found. And in this moment, he believed that the garbage truck had already been taken away. No and that he would way. never be caught. We... And so, when the news reporter mentioned the fact that they had found a body, we see Steven's live reaction and his realization that Does his he, dark he, like, secret rats on himself? was about to come out. I think that's where they had recovered the body or whatever they recovered from there. Body? Um, had you heard anything? Had you seen anything there? Had you seen anything there? Uh, Are you okay, sir? I, I think I need to sit down. In the days following the interview, Stephen That's would be insane! arrested and sentenced to life in prison. There's something about watching these moments, recorded on video. It's so haunting. Bruh. But the moments before murder aren't always released. Bro, I thought it was the end of the video. Footage. There's more in Jesus, fact, dude. many of these moments are shown in the form of pictures. And there's one that has haunted me since my childhood. And I'll never forget watching some TV program as a kid. And seeing this picture, the photo shows two-year-old James Bulger with two other boys walking through a shopping center in Boodle, England. What? In February of 1993, Bulger was visiting a shopping center with his mother, Denise. During their shopping trip, Denise had taken her eyes off of her son for just a second, only to realize that he had vanished. He was no. by her side one moment and gone the next. After the mall was searched, it was realized that James was truly missing, and authorities began searching for the boy. So what, some led kids them took to him? Photo. There was a still shot taken from the CCTV footage what? in the mall that shows Bulger leaving the shopping center with these two unidentified boys. The what? discovery was strange, but it gave Denise hope because the boys who were with James seemed like kids themselves which made Denise relieved. They were probably just innocent kids trying to help a lost two-year-old. I can see that, and so, yeah. for a brief moment, there was hope. Hope that didn't last long. Good evening, you're watching the news from ITN. 
Tonight's headline, police hunting for the missing Merseyside toddler have Bro. found the body. Bolger's deceased body would be quickly found just half a mile away from the mall. What? Having sustained traumatic injury. It would be just a short investigation as authorities were quickly able to discover what exactly had happened thanks to eyewitness testimony the kids and the CCTV it? footage. On the day of Bolger's disappearance, two boys named Robert Thompson and John How old? How old? had skipped school and visited the shopping center. There, they were seen on security footage, seemingly looking for someone, with one of the boys later admitting that they were looking for a child to abduct. And that's when they saw a What? They grabbed him, as seen in the photo, and took him down to a nearby canal. There, they dropped the young boy on his head and dragged him around the area, causing multiple facial wounds. Damn, the bro. The then walked James into a nearby Liverpool and take him into a variety of shops, all the while James was still crying and bleeding. It said that throughout Holy the entire kidnapping, shit. at least 38 people had witnessed the injured boy, but no one reported that. Holy the shit. There's no way that I would see a little kid, <laughs> fucking UK moment, that I would see a little kid injured. I'm pretty sure you could tell if a kid got dropped on his head. And he's probably like crying his ass off because he's abducted by these kids. I've, bruh, ain't no way I'm letting that slide. What, they going Lululemon and shit? UK people, dude. What the freak? Bruh. Flags in the world were there, and people just didn't say a word. And if just one person had called the police, then maybe the story wouldn't have ended the way it did. Wow, Liverpool moment. After their trip into town, John and Robert would take James into the village of Walton and onto a nearby railroad, as shown from this grainy photo taken from a security camera. What? This would be the last moment that James would be seen alive, as he would be tortured once the three reached the railroad. Bruh! The amount of torture Evil ass and kids. injuries that James sustained were unimaginable and unsurvivable, especially for a two-year-old. Bro. After James had passed, Robert and John then buried his head under rubble and left his body on the train track. And they did this in the hope that the train would hit James, making this all look like an accident. Oh my god, so how old were they? Soon after that, and strike his corpse, cutting it in half. Oh. It's devastating. Why? When you see this moment, you have to wonder how different things could have been if someone had just stepped in. But in a case as jarring as this one, there's one more shocking note that I Bro, didn't add. That's so weird that people didn't notice. Like, there's no way. There's no way two, let's say they're like 14. Two 14 year olds could control a toddler from crying, sustaining an injury like that. Like, what? That's crazy, bro. Crazy ass kids for that. As I mentioned previously, Robert and John were just boys when they killed James. And I'm not talking 16 or 17 years old. How old? These kids were 10 years old. The what? I was playing zombies when I was 10. I was prestiging on Black Ops 1 when I was 10. Bros were... Bro, what? How, why? 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 How? They even look like they're wearing, like, relatively normal clothes. They look like normal-ass kids. What? Bro. What trauma- Whoa. I'm- That's so weird. What? Torture, the kidnapping, all of this evil came from the hands of two ten-year-old boys. Ten? There are simply no words for it. Despite being children, the two were tried as adults and recommended by their judge to serve 15 years minimum. So they were tried as an adult, and they still only got 15 years. What the fuck? Is that like a UK thing? Is there like weird laws in the UK? Ah, uh, I don't think it's that bad. I don't think it's that bad that- What the hell? Ah, uh, I thought- I thought the US, like, I thought the US system was bad. That's fucking nuts. However, they would be released just eight years later. No. 
way so they're 18 bro that's even worse bro you know how oh my you know how undeveloped 18 year old brains are that is when kids start exploring themselves making dumbass decisions like 18 to 20 that's like the dumbest that's like the dumbest part of your life that's like when you like just go ham on everything they probably caught more bodies i bet he's gonna tell us about it due to a change in legislature cases like this are incredibly frustrating where are they now do they have instagram what the hell willing to sit back and do nothing to help this child but there's another case that i've come across bro that's so w wait are these people like are they just living life like what what they just like work at a like a they just work at walmart or something like do they got social media and shit bro what that is fucking nuts that might be even more infuriating the following was just a clip of antoinette davis's 911 call on november 10th of 2009 the pain in her voice is clear and it's understandable why she was feeling this way because what? her five-year-old daughter shania had just gone missing from her home the night before she was sleeping peacefully in her bed and the next morning she was nowhere to be seen what? it's a mother's worst nightmare and authorities would quickly rule that foul play was likely their theory was that someone had snuck into the Davis's home and stole Shania during the night. Just took a kid? Noticed. What, what As is... the search for Shania began, police would soon acquire security footage that showed the young girl being carried by no a man shot. in a hotel. The footage shows the two near the elevator, about to head up to the man's room. With a screenshot of this recording being released to the public in an attempt to help find the man in the photo. A lot can be insinuated Bruh. from just this one frame, but as we'll soon find out, things were even worse than what they seemed. <laughs> On the 13th of November, a man named Mario McNeil would come forward as the man seen in the viral photograph. What? He would turn himself over to authorities, but at first refused to speak any more on the situation. However, the following day, he would reveal a disturbing fact about Shania's disappearance. He told authorities that Antoinette had fallen into debt with Mario, as she had owed him a substantial amount of drug money. What? However, Antoinette didn't have the money at the time, and so he took to find their a way kid? to pay Mario back. And it was then that Mario suggested she used a different kind of payment, sex. And so that's exactly what Antoinette resorted to. Only what? She didn't sell herself. She sold her kid? Instead, she used her five-year-old daughter as payment, giving her to Mario. Oh, so hell he no. As a slave. Oh hell it's the most no! Vile thing a mother Bruh. could ever do, and it's not even the worst part. The quote-unquote substantial amount of money that Mario was owed was just two hundred dollars. <gasps> Bruh! I'll Venmo them right now. Two hundred dollars. Oh, that's less than sh that's less than Jordan's, bro. My fucking my TikTok of me shaking my ass made twice as much as that. Two hundred dollars? Oh my god. Bro, that. Uh, Antoinette sold her own daughter for $200. Oh. oh my god. Shania would later be found in a ditch. That's not even a. Bro spent way more than $200 raising the kid to five years old. What the fuck? That doesn't. It... Alongside of the road, having been suffocated to death by Mario, Bro. And piecing things together. It appears that after this clip was taken, Mario had taken the girl up to his room and strangled her there. Tell me. Today, Antoinette is yeah. still in prison. Good, bitch. With Mario being sentenced to death. These moments before murders are all disturbing in their own way, and they all have something in common. They were captured on CCTV footage, but there have been other moments captured by the victims themselves as they show a first-hand perspective of what was soon to come. No and in many ways, shot. that can be even more horrifying. A freaking victim Most recording? Most notably, 24-year-old Cindy Loof had posted a selfie to her Snapchat. Bro said, expressing her... Bro said Cindy. 
It says Sydney. Bro said Cindy. <laughs> excitement for her upcoming date. She had no clue that this would turn out to be the moment before her murder. After Tinder date? That night. Bruh, Cindy don't even get me started on that. Do not ever go on a Tinder date. Just don't. Just, bro, that doesn't, like, if you really think about it, how fucked that is, never trust Tinder unless all of their shit is linked through there and you go to their Instagrams and, like, your friends can verify that they're, like, actual human beings and they've had an interaction with them and, like, they're mutuals. Other than that, fuck that. Do not trust that shit, bro. I bet there's people out there fucking using my dumbass as a, as a Tinder profile and, like, messaging chicks and shit. Guarantee it. No way there's not. Cindy was set to meet up with a woman she had met on Tinder named Bailey Boswell. The two had been on a date the day previous, with things going well enough to warrant a second date. However, things would take a strange turn when, after being lured into Bailey's apartment, Sydney was introduced to Aubrey Trail, a 51-year-old man who happened to be Bailey's boyfriend. What? Cindy had no idea that this was never planned to be a date. It was a setup for her murder. Oh my god. At the home, Aubrey would strangle Sydney with an extension cord, Damn! choking her to death. From there, the two would saw her body <laughs> into 14 pieces. Evil ass couple. The area. What? It was certainly twisted, but this murder was anything but random. Oh. As it was later confirmed that the couple had planned to murder her that evening. Oh, with them being damn. caught on security footage, purchasing the saw they used to cut up her body the day no before the killing. No way! Came. This was all planned out. But why kill Sydney? Well, the answer would be difficult to find at first, as there was no sign of either Bailey or Aubrey. The two had left oh, that's town so as weird. What? started looking for them. But despite them running from the police, Ugly as they were completely out of sight. As the two would frequently post videos online, updating the public on their case, and cussing out those trying to track them down. The Lincoln Police Department apparently wants everyone- Bro, criminals are so stupid, bro. They always do some stupid ass shit like this, like, that's why they always get caught. Because you have to be crazy enough to be a criminal in the first place. And then they're always like super low IQ people. The only people that are like high IQ intelligent killers, they have books written about them in documentaries. That's why there's only a handful of them. Every other one is fucking stupid. What? What is this? Nice disguise, you fucking idiot. <laughs> Yeah, Ted Bundy. See, even if Ted Bundy was alive right now, I doubt he'd be doing this. Was he gonna hop on Insta Live and be like, Good luck finding me, guys? I mean, no disrespect to anyone. I wish Sydney the best. But as far as the police department, you. It's truly bizarre. And despite the two being on the run, so obvious. they would eventually be caught and questioned. Which is when the true horrors of Bitch. this case would be revealed. As the 51-year-old Aubrey would admit to running a cult. He referred to himself as the vampire. And he enlisted the help of young women to help him steal different antiques, perform sexual rituals, Holy and carry out his murders. He was a killer pimp? Jesus. Bro had a whole underground... Damn. Oh my god. He told the women that doing these tasks would give them powers, and that the more brutal the murder, the more power <sighs> they would gain. It's extremely what? disturbing, and it's especially shocking knowing that he actually did have a following. That's with at least nuts. 12 women being linked to the cult. However, despite this information, how many people did he kill? Apparently bragging at one point that he had killed several people. There is to this day no actual proof that he was responsible for any other murders. No besides Sydney's. way. So he got but away with like, out of a movie, like several. With the case featuring many twists and turns, with Bruh, perhaps what? the most dramatic coming back in the summer of 2019 during Bruh. Aubrey's trial. Please be seated. Wait.
Inside the courtroom, he would smash cop out his and neck open him. in an attempt in the neck. to take his own life. Good. He would, however, survive the ordeal and would later be convicted of first-degree murder with Wait. Bos <laughs> Wait, he tried to... He, he... Say that again? Inside the courtroom, he would slash his neck open in an attempt to take his own life. <laughs> How do you mess that up, dude? Oh my god, bro couldn't even do that right, dude. Oh my god, these these criminals, bro. These killers are so dumb. He would, however, survive the ordeal and would later be convicted <laughs> of first-degree murder with Boswell still Is he still in jail? Trial. With oh my god. What happened in this case, it's crazy to think back to where it all started. Sydney was just a young woman excited for her date who had no idea that this day would be That's harassed. so unfortunate, bro. Her, Do not trust those apps. No red flags that night. Before our final case, the warning signs couldn't have been more obvious. Damn, there's another one. What it happened in Warren, Michigan, where 20-year-old India Mackey would enter the car of her 18-year-old boyfriend, Kevin Dixon. And it's unclear what exactly had sparked it, but as the two sat in the vehicle, an argument began. Uh oh. And the two started shouting back and forth. As the argument progressed, Dixon would pull out his handgun and start loading it. However, it appears at the time that Mackie didn't believe he would actually shoot her. And so she pulled out her phone and calmly began recording it. No way, the video bruh. shows the two speaking back and forth as Dixon wipes his fingerprints off of the bullets he was loading. As the video continues, Dixon talks about how he's going to shoot her. You think I'm playing, huh? Okay. You think I'm playing, huh? Hit you with this big fuck oh fire, my bro. god. Eat your up. Bro, just break up! Just break up! Just break up, bro. Oh my god. It's not that, bro. It's not that deep. Just be like, right, I'm leaving you. But he's like, nah, I'm deleting you. What the fuck? Years unbothered. And watching this all, it's so shocking how casual the video is. It's very clear that Mackie didn't think her life was in danger. Bro. She just sat there, casually responding to Does the video keep holding going? holding the camera still. Her hands weren't even shaking. Mackie didn't believe that Dixon would go through with this. But he did. Immediately after this video was it? stopped... Kevin Dixon would shoot India Mackey point blank. Oh, I thought he, I thought she got it on video still. Her. Damn. She was killed instantly. After the shooting, Dixon would drive erratically away with <laughs> Mackey still in the passenger seat before eventually being pulled over and arrested for her murder. Kevin oh Dixon God. remains in prison to this day. Good. Bitch. Holy shit. W video. God damn. I didn't know about any of those. Holy shit. Those were so... The, uh, I don't even know what I was expecting. I was expecting a lot less than what we just watched. Like, I thought it was gonna be like... I, I don't know what I was expecting. That fucking... That blew, my, that blew my fucking mind. Shout out Nick Crowley for that. That's crazy. Sure, it's meant to be simple. But you feel like you gotta buy Kevin Hart!